Matt Brown is a criminal profiler and author of a new book being released next week, which is called The Profiler, My Hunting Serial, My Life Hunting Serial Killers and Psychopaths. And Pat Brown joins me now live. Pat, good morning. Good morning, Alex. Um, police are still calling this death an investigation. They're not saying whether they suspect foul play. They won't say who made the 911 call that led them to Erica's home. What does your gut tell you about this case? Well, I'm guessing they don't have any outward signs of trauma, so they're not immediately saying somebody did something to her. They're waiting on toxicology tests, which leads me to believe there's something to do with some kind of medication or drugs. Mm -hmm. So they would be looking at, did she commit suicide or was it an accidental overdose or could somebody theoretically have given her something? And of course, uh, that's why you can always, you always keep that homicide angle open. Yeah. Well, Blasberg's caddy says that she received a text from Erica in the middle of the night, the day before she was found dead. And Erica said in her text, she was not going to play the Bell Micro Classic, which continues today in Alabama. Erica's father, though, is saying, as you know, his daughter's bags were packed for the tournament. So th there's a real discrepancy there. What do you make of this? Yeah, well, I think it's interesting. A lot of families have a, an extremely difficult time believing that their child could commit suicide. As a matter of fact, I've had many cases where the suicide is actually obvious, but the parents will still insist it is a homicide for years and years and years. Hmm. They just can't believe that their child would, would want out of life, and they didn't see it. They didn't see it coming. But for a lot of parents, they don't. They really don't because we put on our smiles. We go about our day, and, and we, we try to be positive but maybe in you know in private we're struggling with the fact that we think we're kind, our lives are kind of hopeless or we're trapped and we just don't know how to go forth the next day so it is very possible yeah. to pack those bags but thought I just I just can't do it anymore yeah but but again the packing of the bags that's what's interesting and what about the possibility of it being accidental I mean in your experience you know it's one thing to say okay I'm going to self-medicate I want right. to get a good night's sleep I'm anxious or I'm nervous or whatever stressed out and then too much is too much. Right. Well, sometimes women are kind of interesting in this sort. Unlike men who just take out a gun and shoot themselves in the head, a lot of women will take medication. And sometimes, even in their heads, they're not sure what they want. They may take some medication, then take a little more, saying, I just don't know what I maybe I just want to sleep a little bit more. Mm. So they sort of overdose, sort of suicide, but maybe even in their own heads, they just don't know if they want to wake up in the morning. So I think they're going to have to really find out how much, if she did indeed overdose on a drug, exactly how much did she take? So would it be obvious that she did this on purpose or could it have been accidental or just a confused state? Yeah. yeah. So, 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 so your gut, based on everything we know, you don't think we're looking at a homicide? It's not looking that way only because they're saying there's no, they're not saying anything traumatic has gone on. Uh, that, that would lead me to believe they're at least uh, thinking toward homicide. I think they're waiting on the toxicology reports. And there are those indications she was stressed out and, and, having, and struggling with the year mm -hmm. of her golfing, not getting where she wanted to go. So I think we'll have to wait and see for those toxicology reports to come back in. Okay, Pat Brown, as always, thanks so much, Pat. Thanks, Alex.